say hello. Should be uh, should be full screen now. Type in uh, type yeah. in if, uh, you can, or just say. Can you see me? Uh, can you see me full screen? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yell out if you have a question or anything like that. Perfect. So we're gonna start just sitting, just like we did on Wednesday. Starting to move a little bit around the uh, the shoulder. Roll the shoulder blades back. Big deep breath. Kind of landing here for a moment, taking the opportunity to start to move the spine a little bit, move the shoulder blades, roll on the back, breathing, big deep breath, getting the ribs, using the muscles. And then going the other way. Forward circle with the shoulders, again, breathing, again, using the back. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that moving the shoulders a little bit more to our back, just like we did before, basically a seated cat cow. Arch your back a little bit, look up, breathe out, engage your core, tuck your tailbone, tuck your in, breathe out, belly button in, breathe in, arch your back a little bit, breathe out, round your back a little bit. Ready? Can you go that way? Now go the other way. Put your head back. Put your head back like this. Put your head back like this. We're going to do a similar thing that you've done before, going side to side. Breathe one hand across your pelvis, breathe the other hand over. Breathe in, come up straight, breathe out, pull to the side. Remember that we're just starting, we're just warming up, so it doesn't have to be a big stretch. It's just more for getting the spine mobile at the beginning. We're going to do some other core work, some shoulder work, some hip work. So uh, those are all going to be pretty short of this with the spine, so we're going to need the spine moving a little bit. You can totally do this sitting in a chair or even actually lying down with a little bit of modification or even standing up. And one more little way. Good, bring your hands down. Taking the elbows up the outside, getting a little bit of turning in your rib cage. Hips are staying still towards the front. If you're doing this standing up, it's the same thing. Hips are staying still towards the front. Breathe in and you're looking as you go one way. Breathe out and engage your core as you go the other way. Engage, fill your rib cage. Engage your core. Fill your rib cage. Engage your core. And then try to make it nice and easy, continuous through the movement. And then try breathing the other way. Breathe in, expand your rib cage. Breathe out, engage your core. Breathe in, expand your rib cage the other way. Engage your core so you're going the other way. Come back straight forward. Try to find a neutral spine, back up nice and straight. Keep in mind, back up straight doesn't mean chin lifted or chin forward, it means kind of chin back. Uh, back up straight doesn't necessarily mean uh, chest lifted with an arch back. Sitting up straight with a little bit core engaged, chin tuck, uh, back nice and flat. We're going to breathe in, try to keep your spine neutral now. Breathe in, fill your belly. And then fill your ribs. Breathe out, let that be empty. Take your belly button towards your spine. As you take your belly button towards your spine, breathe out and imagine that breath out is supporting you in a very tall spine. Breathe in, fill your belly. The breath in lifts you up, and then the breath out holds you up, or the core lifts you up on the breath out. 
Tell me yes. Tell me yes. You can feel your core set muscle engage, your transition dominance. Can you feel your core engaging belly button just fine, holding you up? Or tight if you don't want to say. You can get quite a lot of core work here just by squeezing, just by squeezing tighter, belly comes in, arms to the side of your body comes in. And then breathe out, let that go, relax. Now we're gonna move a little bit towards the shoulders and just moving uh, moving towards you a little bit. Reach your arms up like they're really reaching on a wall. Now we're gonna throw back and then retract the shoulder blades. So reach the elbows forward, maybe engage through the chest, engage through the muscles underneath your shoulder blades. Keep your spine neutral, but reach forward with your shoulder blades, reach forward with your elbows, and then pinch the shoulder blades together, engage the muscles on the back of your spine, pull your shoulder blades together, retract your shoulder blades, reach forward, maybe you're breathing in, reaching forward, breathing out, reaching back. Good, then relax, relax the arm. And then now we're gonna do elevation and depression. So going out to the side. So pull your elbows in towards your ears, relax your arms down, and then pull your shoulder blades down towards your rib cage. Maybe you go breathe in, lift the shoulder blades up, breathe out, pull the shoulder blades down. You should feel the muscles underneath the shoulder blade working to pull the shoulder blade down and into the rib cage. Shortening the neck. And then lengthening the neck. And then again. Two more times. One more. Good. And then what we're going to do is we're going to reach out the shoulders. So a lot of a lot of us are in our, uh, in our position are our shoulders forward all the time position. So we're just gonna do a little exercise here for rolling the shoulder blades back. Retract the shoulders, pinch the shoulder blades together on the spine. Keep the shoulder blades pinching together on your back. Reach behind you, try to touch your fingertips together as far back as you can. Reach behind you, reach underneath as much as you can. So now we're working on retracting the shoulder blades. We're working on <laughs> We're working on taking the shoulder blades back in an external rotated position and an internally rotated position. So keep trying that over the top of the down. You should feel a lot of work in your middle back, holding your shoulder blades back. Two more. And one more. Good, and then relax, relax. Shake the shoulder blades out, shake the rib cage out. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna move onto our backs on the ground. Breathe into your belly. Breathe out, engage the corset muscle, take your belly button to your lower back and lengthen your spine as you breathe out. Breathe into your belly, breathe in your rib cage, and breathe out. Belly button goes to the spine. Go ahead and try that. So on the ground, all we're doing right now is we're finding a neutral position. And then we kind of keep that neutral position with the breathe in, relax the core, breathe out. Take your belly button into your spine, squeeze through your core, lengthen your spine and the breath out. Keeping in mind a lengthened spine, a lengthened spine doesn't mean arched. A lengthened spine doesn't mean flexed. It means just uh, actually more neutral. Using the core to pull it straighter. Now here we're gonna do this with a little bit of a dead bug. So here we're gonna reach towards the sky, 
reach the knees up. We're going to use that same core engagement now as we do a little reach with the arm and the leg. Breathe in. Breathe out. Belly button in your spine, maybe pressing the lower back flat against the ground. Reach out one leg and one hand. Stretch to this side. You should feel the stretch on this shoulder, stretch on this hip. But your lower back is flat towards the ground. Breathe in, relax. Breathe out, go to the other side. Reach one hand up, reach the other hand down. Pull your core into the mat. It doesn't matter as long as the elbows and knees are up. It doesn't matter if the hands are up or if the feet are up or if the hands and knees are down. As long as the elbows and the knees are up, it doesn't matter. Breathe in. Breathe out as you go out, press the lower belly in, feel that corset muscle engaging and elongating your spine. Breathe out, relax. Uh, excuse me, breathe in, relax. It is important that you relax a little bit. Make sure your spine is staying neutral the whole way. If you can't keep your spine neutral, then it means you need to go less, or you need to tuck your tailbone, take your belly button towards your spine a little bit harder. Again. One more. And relax. Good. Relax. Um, if you have a band, grab a band. Like maybe tie something in a knot like this. Or you can go with your or you can go with your props in between your elbows. And you're holding your pops in between your elbows. I'm going to bring my elbows to 90 degrees and then bring my hands out of the band. If we're, using, if we're using the band, then still keeping our hands and our elbows parallel like this. What we're going to do is lie flat on the ground, lie flat on your back, and reach your elbows up towards the sky. You don't, even, you don't have to have a band, you don't have to have this uh, prop. Just do the same thing, just do the same shape. You don't have it. What I want you to do is I want you to breathe in, relax, breathe out. As you breathe out, without arching or rounding your back, lift your elbows up towards the sky. So that's like a scapular push-up like we did before. Breathe in, relax. Breathe out and you your core. Reach your elbows up towards the sky. So what we're practicing here, keep going down, what we're practicing here is being able to reach forward with the shoulders without punching the back. So a lot of times when we go forward with the shoulders, we're rounding the back. Right now what we're practicing is pressing the shoulders forward while keeping a neutral back. How do we know we're keeping a neutral back? Is because our back is flat on the floor. So our back is flat on the floor and staying neutral. Reach the elbows up towards the sky. Let the shoulder blades relax. If you have a strap, you're just adding a little bit for your shoulder stabilizer muscles. Elbows go forward and then relax. Elbows go forward and then relax. Do two more. And then relax. Relax your arms. Uh, if it's too much, if it's too much with the band, then bring your elbows together a little bit more. Makes it easier on the band. Uh, or you don't have to even use a band. You can just hold your arms here. Holding your arms here may be enough workout for some of you. We're going to go back to the band and we're just going to combine that with a little bit of core exercise by reaching the hands up over the top. So we're going to do a uh, very similar, very similar movement. Elbows are 90 degrees. Breathe in, relax. Breathe out, belly button goes towards the ground, reach up towards the, towards the floor, and then breathe in, relax, come back. Breathe out, relax towards the ground, squeeze your belly button towards your spine. Try that out, and you have 10 more. I'm breathing out, contracting my belly button, breathing into my ribcage, holding my spine neutral with my core, and then using my shoulder stabilizers to reach up. One more. 
Good, and relax. Relax your band, throw it to the side. Relax your arms, shake your arms out, shake your hips out. We're gonna go to glute bridges, so a little stretch for the lower back and a little bit engaging for our bum muscles. We're gonna bring your heels as comfortably close to your bum as you can. Lay your back down to the ground. Drive through your heels, squeeze your heels towards your bum. Lift your bum up to the sky as much as you can. Reach the hands up towards the sky if you can. Try that two times just like that. Hips come up and then hips come down. If there's a lot of pressure on your knees, just walk out the feet a little bit more out like that. Should be a lot easier. Um, and this is a lot for you to stay with this position. If you can do these glute bridges easily, then what I want you to do is start to engage your obliques by reaching up to the sky and rolling on your ribcage to reach up. Roll on the ribcage to the other side and then come back down. So right now what I'm doing is I'm squeezing through my bum. My back is basically flat, it should elevate it off the ground. My bum is squeezing hard, then I'm squeezing through my core to reach the head up, roll the ribcage on the ground. Roll the rib cage the other way, and then come down. Squeeze through your bum. There shouldn't, there shouldn't be any stress on your lower back. If there's stress on your lower back, come a little bit lower. Focus on squeezing through your bum. All the pressure should be on your core. If you're reaching, if you're not reaching, all the pressure should be on the back of your legs. Keep going with this one. So uh, a lot of times people don't train at the back of their body. Our glutes and our postural muscles, and that's what we've been working a little bit in this series. Two more. And one more. Good, and then relax. Turn towards me. Bring your elbow down to the mat, maybe take your bottom knee put it down to the mat. Now we're going to work our obliques with a little bit of our side hip muscles. Reach one hand to the sky if you want, or you can put this hand on the mat. You can leave this bottom knee bent to 90 degrees. You can put the foot out like this. What we're going to do is we're just going to take the hips up and then drop them down. Take the hips up. Try to keep your back nice and flat. Keep pushing strong out of your elbow to the ground. If that's hard, then put the side of your knee on the ground a little bit like that for help. Push really sharp into the mat with the side of your hip, and then do a little bit of a side crunch. You should be able to feel your core is engaging and your hip is engaging. Three more. And good. Roll over to the other side, same thing on the other side. So uh, what we worked work on already is our shoulders, working our posture muscles and our shoulder blades, our shoulder blades our muscles. We're working a little bit of our hip stabilizers now and our core. This movement is actually combining all three of those as I'm depressing. I'm depressing my shoulder, I'm pressing the hip into the ground, and I'm squeezing through the side of the core. Head over. Same thing, the whole side of our body. And two more, one more. And relax. Good, relax, relax. And come on up. Relax out the floor, come off to the TV if you have a cushion. I uh, can ditch it uh, you can get it to the side for right now. And we're gonna move back into our lunges. This time we're gonna do lunges a little bit differently. I want you to take your foot a little bit further back in the wood. We did two types of lunges over this series. We did our regular lunge with the hip going back, knees go to 90 degrees. And then we did our lunge with the leg back and finding our uh, hip flexor stretch. So here what I want to do is a little bit of combining for both of those. You might go a little bit longer here and we're challenge your hips a little bit to go down and then press your hips back 
and then squeeze through your bum to come up. So go ahead and do this with me. Come down, straight up, and then hips go back. See, I'm straightening the front knee, and then up. If this is a lot of your back leg, hinge even more and pull more of the weight of your front leg. Your legs don't have to be that far apart to do this. I can do it here, see how close my legs are? And I'm, I'm, I'm very tall, so this is really close stance. You can do a little bit wider if you want. Shouldn't be a lot of pressure in the knees. What we want to feel is more pressure moving into your hips. And the way we're doing that is by keeping our weight in our front foot. I'm not moving my weight to the back foot. Keep the weight in your front foot. You should feel the weight just in the back of your leg, uh, especially on that front side. We're going to go five more seconds here. And we're going to try the other leg. So I'm just going to bring my legs back. Maybe try one or two regular lunges just to get the feel. And then start experimenting a little bit and hinge back as you go down. So sit your hips down, hinge your hips back, drive to the back of the leg on the front foot to come up. Deep hinge, weight on the front foot, try that out. Holler at me if you have a question or type it in the uh, comment box. We're going to do 30 more seconds on that side. Sit down, hinge. Ten more seconds. One more time. Good. Relax. So now what we're doing is we're up, we're trying to get our hip and our bone. Moving a little bit more through our lunges, so that's the reason we're going to go for that. Now we're going to work the side of our hip. Again, if you have that band like we had before, go ahead and grab that band with your yoga strap and put it around your feet. Or if you don't have a band or anything for your feet, that's totally fine. We're just going to do jumping instead. So if you don't have a band, what I'm going to do is really push off and do a little bit of jumping. For those people with the band, we're going to do the same thing, but just stepping. Sit on one side, take your hip back, the same hinge of the hip we just worked on, hinge your hip back, press your leg down into the opposite direction, move to the other side, hinge your hip back. So hinge your hip, push your foot away, hinge your hip on this side, push your foot away, hinge your hip. You should feel the side of your hip is working. Go forward and then go backward. Maybe you're jumping, maybe you're adding a jump, and you're really pushing away from you, pushing away from you. Do one more time, uh, do two more times forward and two more times back. Hinge, straighten, hinge, straighten. The hinge is actually helping me balance. And then the pushing away is helping with that hip engaged. Make sure you keep your knees pointed right over your middle toe. But the knees aren't doing too much here. The jump is coming mostly from my hips. Last time. Good, relax, take the, take the band back down. You can ditch that band away. Move the hips a little bit, shake them out. Move a little bit side to side. Good. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do, we're gonna go back to our uh, lunges. We're gonna combine like we did a little bit for the core before. So if you have a band set up on the wall, you can use this band. We're gonna go back to lunges and add this core. Just like we did yesterday with the turn, we're just gonna add a lunge. Or if you have the weight, uh, if you want to get the weight, you can totally do that as well. With the weight right in front. Or if you don't have a weight, don't worry about it. Don't even worry about it. We're just going to go to the lunge and we're just going to use our core a little bit more. So what I want you to do is I want you to take one foot back. I'll show you with this band for so you can see. Take the foot that, that, uh, that closest to the band, take that back. Make sure you're hinging back with your hip. Press out the side of your hip, engage your core, turn the band, and then come back up. 
So we're gonna go here to one. So we're gonna go just left side for now. Hinge down. You should feel the legs press apart on the ground. Most of the weight's in the front foot. I can feel my hip engage, and then I can feel my oblique engage turn to the side. If you have a weight, you don't have anything, it's okay, still the same. Take one foot back, engage your obliques, twist through your ribcage, come back up. Keep going, keep going. Now we're coordinating in a little bit of the hip engagement with the leg work, with the core work, winning a little bit of the arm work, just uh, the arms are just folding here. And last one, good, and then come up and go to the other side. So now going to the other side, I'm gonna step backwards. I'm gonna bring my foot back, press the legs apart, engage my core, turn over the standard leg, come back. Bring down, turn, come back. Or if you have a wing or anything, that's okay. Back, engage your feet, engage your core, turn, come back. If you don't have a weight uh, or again, yeah, maybe engaging a little more your shoulder blade, holding your body back. And five more seconds, so you can do two more, one more. Good, so a little bit more activation to the hip, and the last. What we're gonna do is we're gonna stretch out those hips a little bit, stretch out the shoulders, get a little bit of engagement in the back of the shoulders. You're gonna be doing it a little bit of balance this time, reaching the leg to the ground, bring one knee up to close to the chest, reach the arm forward, reach the arm back, and then we can use, we can switch every time. Now I'm pulling, I'm pulling my shoulder blade back, engaging that one retraction of the shoulder blade, and I'm bringing my knee up and across, giving a little bit of hip stretch, turning the rib cage, pulling the shoulder back, switch sides every time. Or you might be on a step. If you have a hard time with the balance, just come on a step and just go with one side, and then come back, one side. Otherwise, we're going to be rotating both sides. We'll bring your knee more across the side uh, to stretch a little more your bum. Maybe, but we also want to be good as the back of our shoulder leg. Pull your shoulder blade in towards your back. Your hip is working the opposite direction. You may not do this on the side of your body, but the, your bum and your uh, shoulder blade. Switch sides if you have any on the uh, bench. Switch sides. If you're balancing, then we're just balancing both sides. and then just relax. Good. So we're gonna work a little bit with our squat, but this time we're gonna work a little bit more with our squat in a weight shifting position. So uh, the other day we, we came down into a deep squat. Now we're gonna do a little bit, of a, uh, a little bit less of a deep squat, but work more of what we call a weight shifting squat. So what I want you to do is first do a sumo squat, point your toes at 45 degrees. Try to keep your back straight, a little bit of hinge in your hips, Come down, see if you can push your knees out. You can feel a little stretch in the middle of your thighs. So coming down, pressing the knees out. You should feel a little stretch in the middle of your thighs. Maybe just coming down to, uh, maybe just coming down to about uh, 90 degrees in the knees. And see how, see how wide you can make your legs. Feel free to make your legs as wide as you can comfortably with still keeping the knees pointed out of the toes. If your knees start to come in, um, if I go out too wide, you can see my knees want to start to come in. That's too wide, so come a little bit less, point the knees over the toes. And just explore with that. And then we're going to explore just doing a squat on one side and then the other. So I'm just going to squat on this side, with knee pointing over the middle toes. I'm going to go a little bit wider for this one. I, should, I feel a little bit stretch in my inner thighs, and then I'm pressing off, coming up to neutral, squatting just on the other side. Again, feeling a little stretch. I'll be five. Try to do that. Go back and forth. 
Just explore that. See if you can feel a little stretching in your thighs. If somebody yell out at me or type in the comments if you can feel the stretch in your inner thighs. Yes. Yes. Can you see your knees pointed over your middle toes in both directions? Yes. Okay, good. So now we're gonna do we're gonna add a little bit for our shoulders with that one, okay? So I'm gonna grab a weight. If I'm grabbing a weight, it's a very lightweight, maybe three pounds, five pounds. Uh, if you don't have a weight, it's okay, don't worry about it. If you can grab like a ball or something, you know, like a water bottle, and you can just pretend, just even you know, pretend it's really heavy, give yourself a little bit of the internal resistance. We're gonna draw the arm in a circle, getting a little bit of traction in the arm, but coordinating that traction with uh, this uh, weight shifting squat in the leg. So I'm just pushing the weight over the one side and the other, trying to big circle to the outside. So, um, so this is the same as this is the same as the shoulder traction. Remember we did the shoulder traction the other day. We were at the end where we just sat and let it pull out. It's the same thing, but now we're coordinating it with the legs, getting a little bit of shoulder traction. So should be reaching out a little bit with the arm the whole time, feeling the leg help the arm with the weight. And try to go the other direction in your circle. Should start to feel like working the shoulder, and that's good. We're exercising the shoulder. We're working the shoulder on all the sides of the shoulder, plus our rotator cuff, especially if you have a weight in here. Yes. We can go, yeah, definitely in 15 seconds. By the way, I'm not going so much in the legs that the legs are taking over the exercise. I'm not going super deep, but I'm going, I am working the legs too. And let's go with the other arms. So the legs can basically stay where they're at. Still feeling a little stretch in the hip and the adductors. Drawing a big circle. So even though we're working our shoulders, don't forget about your uh, legs and you're stretching your knees out. We are working here, are stretching our adductors. These are hip flexors. The adductors are actually hip flexors also, and so they get really tight. And a lot of activities uh, can be helped by stretching them out a little bit. And pressing the knees out over the toes, working a little bit of our hip stabilizer muscles on the outside. You should be able to feel your, and do you can see my hands here? The reason it's here is because I can feel my glute helping push the weight over the other side. Keep going. You can go really slow. The slower and kind of the harder actually. And let's go the other way. Keep going, keep going. 20 seconds. Five seconds. We need to relax. It's good. Relax your, uh, relax, put the weight down, uh, doing one more for the back. Now we're going to coordinate the postural muscles, so now we're going to more, uh, that was more shoulder stabilizer muscles. Here we're going to work our postural muscles to the back of our shoulder blade, also coordinating now with our uh, T-spine rotation and our normal squat. So our normal squat, just like we did, knees pointing right the toes. So now we're going to go to the wall. Or remember we did this also yesterday with the band, just reaching the hand up like this. You can do the band, wall might be a little bit easier. I'm reaching the hand up towards the sky, We're sitting really close to the wall. The other hand maybe goes up or keeps his hand on my hips. Watch your knees go right over your middle toes. Sit down and reach his hand up. So you should be feeling your shoulder blade. Your shoulder blade should be feeling it pulled out. Your rib cage on a roll, but don't let your hips roll. Go ahead and try it out. Regular squats, pull your shoulder blade back. Most of what you should be feeling it uh, behind the shoulder blade. Again, those postural muscles. Uh, we're really nice, a little bit sure, and we're using our core 
to make sure the hips don't go and twist to the side. Keep going, keep going. And two more, pull that shoulder back, twist, one more. Good, and then do the other side. Relax that arm down, maybe shake that arm out. Reach the other hand up to the to the wall. Everything about the lower body should be a normal squat. Because the lower body is doing a completely normal squat. The upper body is twisting and rolling the shoulder blade back to reach towards the sky. You should feel yourself wanting to hit, turn your hips and using your hip stabilizer muscles in your core to not let those hips turn. Pulling the shoulder blade back. 10 more seconds, we're gonna start to cool off a little bit. Good, relax. Good, relax, let the hands fall. Shake out the bottom, shake out the spine, shake out the arms, shake out the hips. We're gonna do a little bit of um, Stretching through the body. Uh, we're gonna do that in some of the positions that we've been working on this week. First, uh, starting with our lunge position. So we're gonna do a hip flexor lunge. I'm gonna sit into my front foot, bring my back foot straight and strong on the ground. I like my heel on the ground on this one, so I'm doing a little more of a stretch. Uh, but, you, but if you feel it too much in your in your calf and you're not feeling any in your hip flexor, then uh, you can go ahead and lift your heel off the ground, no big deal. My front leg is bent, taking on my weight. My back leg is straight and strong, arms across the chest. Sit down into your hip flexor. Hinge a little bit of your front hip, all the way to be going to your front foot. You should feel a little stretch right here. If you don't feel a stretch right here, tuck your tailbone under. That should really pull on the stretch here. And then breathe into your ribcage, twist, and breathe out, come back up. You can come off and lower that leg. So we're gonna sit down on the front leg. Tuck your tailbone, engage your core, twist, stretching through the front of your hip. Again, if you don't feel in the front of your hip, then tuck your tailbone more. Tuck your tailbone underneath more, and then turn, or you can just take your back leg back a little bit further back. Five more seconds, tuck your tailbone, stretch your hip flexor, breathe in your rib cage, one more. And then go to the other side, bring your other foot in front. Again, try to find the ground in that front foot. Try to find a very place where you can feel a little bit of stretch in your front hip flexor, tuck your tailbone a little bit, stretching to your front hip flexor. Hinge at your hips forward, breathe into your rib cage, breathe out, relax, come off your foot. Keep going there. Got a few more, 15 more seconds. One more. Good, relax, good. Now we want to find a wall. We're going to stretch through our lap and the side of our hip at the same time, just like we did the other day, but now combining them. So try to go up against the wall, bring the foot that's closest to the wall behind you. I'm stepping to the wall all the way down my front foot. Bring this other foot behind you. Turn your hips toward the front. If you turn your hips toward the front, you might already be starting to feel a little bit of this outside hip, and that's what we're going for. You're reaching across your body to the wall for a little bit of balance. Stretch your lap and the side of your hip, the front and outside of your hip at the same time. Hip presses towards the wall, stretch your lap, come back up. And if you can't feel on the outside of your hip, turn more, turn more your hips toward the front and then push your hip down to the outside. I can really feel a really good stretch right here. You don't necessarily need the wall, but it should it's a helpful um, 
it's just a helpful cue, a helpful feedback cue, and also it's good for balance too. If you're not super good with balance, then you're gonna want a wall for sure. Okay, one more. And then you're gonna turn to the other side. Using the wall again, bringing your leg that's closest to the wall behind you, all the way to the front foot, turn your hips on your front foot, reach your arms up, press your hip out to the side, stretch through your lat, stretch through the front of your hip. Two more. Good, and then we're gonna stretch a little bit through our chest. I want you to reach the hands up towards the sky. Take the elbows down, fists go back, and take your elbows back, bring them all the way down. You should feel a stretch all the way across your chest. Relax your arms, maybe round your back, let your head fall down, relax, shake. Breathe in, reach up. Maybe you're even sitting down at the hips, taking the hips down, pull the elbows down and back, you feel a stretch across your chest, opening through uh, your heart center, and then relax the arms down, reaching up. One more. And relax. Good. Now we're pushing in our pec minor. Reach the hand back behind you. Grab the hand with your other hand. Push your hand back. Roll your shoulder blade back. You should feel a stretch uh, sort of on the inside of your chest right here or inside of your arm, inside of your shoulder. Press the hand back. And you might even go forward and backward with this one. I always like moving stretches like we talked about before. The whole point of this uh, series is to get you moving in the middle of the day to move our whole bodies. So don't don't just forget that just we're doing a stretch. And the other side. And if you're not feeling a stretch, try pulling. Try rolling the arm back, rolling the shoulder blade back. A little bit more. One more. Good. And then we're going to use the wall again for a shoulder capsule stretch. We're going to bring our uh, you're gonna bring your hand to the wall just like this. I want your arm to be straight, arm to be straight. Put your shoulder on the wall. You might go right up against the wall, flat all the way against the wall. Even here you might be a stretch for some of you. If you need more stretch, keep your arm straight, turn towards me. You should feel the stretch in the front of your shoulder. This one I can't do without the wall, but I can try to demo using this cart. It's kind of like I'm turning my body away from the arm, stretching to the front of the shoulder capsule. The chest is staying against the wall. And one more. Good, and then we'll do the other side. So the same thing, you reach down here straight against the wall. Turning, say your body stays against the wall.
Good, and then relax. Relax, come back to your mat. So we're gonna go back on our back, pushing your knee down, stretching the side of your hip, and then pulling your knee across the body, stretching the back of your hip. The whole time, the back could be flat against the ground the whole time. You really didn't have to move too much. You get a feeling of the stretch across right here. And one more, down, and up, and then we'll go to the other side, same thing, put it down, come down. You should be able to get a stretch by pressing your knee down. If you really can, you can bring this foot up, and then alternate. You should be able to get a stretch by bringing your knees towards your opposite shoulder. If you can't get a stretch, rather than twisting, bring your knee closer to your armpit. And then push your knee down. And one more down, one more up. Good, and relax, come on right up. Come up to your seat. Maybe move a little bit of your rib cage. Move a little bit of your spine. Move a little bit of your shoulders. And take a few deep breaths. See if you can feel your core. Keeping your body up straight, not to be just squeeze or holding thing, but just because we've been activating it, we've been activating our back muscles, we've been activating our core. The first thing I want to say is this is five days, so that's all five. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. I appreciate you joining me for five days and a little bit of movement routine for me. It's been really good for me to just move a little bit through my day, but also to get some feedback from all of you about what you like and what you didn't like and what you, your needs have been and to run this experiment with me has been really great. And uh, we're working on the kinks out. Most of the technology seems to work for a lot of you. Many people are using these uh, videos later to work on their own. And that's, and that's awesome for them. Uh, I really want to encourage you guys to stick with it. If you keep doing these movement series with me at lunchtime, where you're going to notice some changes. You're going to notice your back being a little bit more upright. You're going to notice your hips starting to help you out a little bit more. You're going to notice your balance improving. Uh, even in inversions, if you uh, like yoga, you're going to balance uh, moving your uh, support you in your hands. You're going to have less pain in your shoulders, less pain in your hips, less stiffness. Uh, so I really encourage you to keep it up, and I appreciate that. And, uh, but in the meantime, I'd, well, I'd love to keep up your movement practice, correcting your posture, building your core strength, hip stabilization, shoulder stabilization. Uh, training. So uh, that's what we're going to be next week, Monday through Friday. Uh, thanks so much for coming. It's been a great uh, series. Um, does anybody have any questions or anything like that? Not right now. Okay.